Okay, so in this lecture, uh, we are going to look at solubility product. So the solubility product, which is abbreviated as KSP, uh, is defined as um, the product of molar concentrations of constituents. So constituents uh, or constituent ions. Um, and each of these ions raised to the power of its um, stoichiometric coefficient. Is coefficient in the equilibrium equation. And take note that this equilibrium equation we're talking about must be a balanced chemical equation. Um, it's also important to make mention that the KSP value, which is the solubility product, is actually temperature dependent. So each time we're talking about uh, solubility, uh, we know that the solubility is largely to do with uh, uh, substances are being able to dissolve in water. And most of these substances that can dissolve in water are usually ionic compounds. Uh, so most of these ionic compounds can dissolve in water. But there are some that are insoluble in water. So we are going to uh, uh, pay particular attention to the compounds that are basically uh, insoluble in water. Those are those that are said to be insoluble in water. Uh, it's also important to uh, make mention that even the most um, insoluble, the most insoluble uh, ionic compounds. Dissolve to a small extent, to a small extent. So, even these uh, substances that ideally would say they are insoluble in water do actually dissolve to a certain extent, and therefore, because of this, an equilibrium does exist. So an equilibrium exists uh, between the undissolved, which is the solid, the undissolved solid, and also its aqueous ions. For example, uh, if we have a solid MX with M being the um, metallic ion and S being the anion, in solution, solution, an equilibrium uh, would exist 
where you have m plus ions plus x minus ions like that. Another example is the, the equilibrium that would exist between barium sulfate, uh, which is a solid. It would also ionize, partially um, dissolve, to give us barium 2 plus ions plus the sulfate ion also in aqueous. Another example that we can give is lead to chloride is a solid also um, would give lead to ions in solution and also to chloride ions in solution. And therefore, um, you do recall that we have said that the KSP, um, the KSP is basically the product of molar concentrations. So when we were looking at um, uh, chemical equilibrium, we did mention that um, when we write the um, equilibrium constants, we do not include um, solids and also liquids. This also applies to the um, KSP because the equilibrium constant is the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. In this case, the reactant, if you check, uh, you will note that the reactant here is the solid form. So if we have to write the equilibrium uh, uh, constant uh, for MX, it would uh, disregard the reactant in this case, which is the solid and therefore uh, to write the KSP for the first um, ionization reaction that we have written here uh, would be uh, KSP so we have KSP is equal to the concentration of the M ion uh, plus times the concentration of the X ion uh, like that where uh, the square brackets here, we are saying that this is equal to the concentration in moles per dense meter cubed, uh, or you could say uh, moles uh, per liter or to the minus one, uh, which is also equivalent to the molar, just a capital M. So we are saying that here solids, are not included. They are not included in an equilibrium. In an equilibrium uh, constant expression. So just like we we saw for the uh, for the equilibrium constants Kc and Kp, we did mention also there that uh, the value um, the, the concentration of the solids or liquids, pure solids, pure liquids, they are not included in the KSP expression. So, for example, we can say that um, uh, write the write the KSP expressions. KSP expressions of the following. So if we have A, um, barium sulfate, which is a solid, um, B, if we have lead to chloride, which is also a solid. So right here we can we can just put them in front here. If I can just change the color. Uh, so we say that first thing you write the um, ionization. So the barium sulfate solid will break down into its uh, ions 
to form barium 2 plus ions aqueous plus the sulfate ion also aqueous the ksp for this is just the product of the concentration of uh, the two so you have a barium 2 plus ions times the concentration of the sulfate radical uh, and that gives you the ksp value uh, take note that these here are equilibrium concentrations these are e equilibrium concentrations so if you are given this question you need to establish what the equilibrium concentrations if they are not provided uh, b for for b you also have to So for B also, you can write the KSP expression. Okay. So you can write the KSP expression. Say KSP is equal to, oh, sorry. So before we, we write the KSP, we write the ionization of lead to chloride. So lead lead to chloride solid or ionized like that to give us the lead to ions in aqueous plus take note here that we have two chloride ions so we will write two cl minus and aqueous the ksp expression for lead to chloride becomes the concentration of lead uh, times the concentration of the chloride ions which are in aqueous raised to the power 2 so as we mentioned um, uh, in our introduction of KSP um, it's the concentration of the constituents raised to the power of 2 um, in your own time you can try to write the KSP expressions for the following this should be our C uh, ion 3 hydroxide um, which is a solid and you can also write the expression for uh, CA5 uh, PO4 3 and also OH which is um, so this compound is called appetite so write the ksp expression for this compound the other aspect that we want to look at also when it comes to ksp are the units of ksp so KSP does have units and sometimes we'll ask for these units. So the value of um, KSP has basically um, units and these vary with temperature. Now, other than this, um, the value, uh, or rather the units of uh, uh, KSP are dependent um, on what type of compound that you have. So for example, uh, silver chloride. So silver chloride, I has a KSP expression of a concentration of silver times the concentration of chlorine. So the units for the KSP of silver chloride will be um, 
moles squared and dense meters to the minus six. Or you can say it will be molar squared. molar squared so the reason is because um, you have here molar times molar and we know that uh, molar is moles per liter or moles per dense meter cubed so whichever one you want to use um, another example is um, uh, lead to chloride In the ksp for this will be equal to the concentration of lead uh, 2 plus times the concentration of chlorine chloride ions raised to the power 2 if we substitute the units that will be molar times molar squared which is uh, molar cubed um, if you check uh, you simplify molar cubed you're going to have uh, moles to the power three and dense meter cube to the minus nine. Okay, which is uh, equivalent to molar uh, moles to the power three and liters to the minus three. Okay, so those um, are the units. Um, so we can give another example. Um, we said, um, what are the units of the KSP values for the following? So if we say one, ion two hydroxide, and also um, number two, um, ion three hydroxide. So this is simple. All that you do is first of all to write the KSP expression and substitute for the units. So KSP would be um, concentration of ion. Uh, so since we have a two here, so this is ion two. So it will be to the power two plus. Oh, sorry, ion 2 plus, not to the power 2 plus. Then we have hydroxyl ions. We have two of them. So that will be to the power 2. We substitute the units. Um, that will be uh, molar and molar squared. So that gives us molar cubed. Or that, that uh, simplifies to moles to the power three and dense meters to the power negative nine for ion three hydroxide you also write the ksp expression uh, because of this three it means that that is ion three uh, so that becomes ion three plus concentration times the concentration of hydroxyl ions raised to the power three um, so that simplifies to uh, moles to the power 4 and dense meter cubed or rather dense meters to the minus 12. So that is how you, you write the, the units to the minus 12 like that. What then is the importance of KSP? Okay, um, in medicine, uh, in industry, and even in our everyday life. So the KSP is important because it basically allows uh, for quantitative It allows for quantitative predictions related to 
how much of a given substance or given ionic compound dissolves in water. So it allows for us to be able to approximate how much um, of a given substance can dissolve in water. Now, there are a number of calculations that we can do that involve KSP. And these can be done in about three ways. So let's look at uh, calculations involving KSP. Let's say calculations involving the solubility product. These can be done in three ways. Number one, we can calculate solubility from KSP. Number two, we can calculate KSP from solubility data. And number three, by solving problems dealing with precipitation. Dealing with precipitation. Okay, so that is, um, those are the three ways uh, we can um, attempt questions that involve KSP. Let's look at solubility equilibrium. So solubility equilibrium. So we have mentioned that um, the KSP is basically the the product, or rather, it's equal to the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants raised to. To the power of its coefficients. Um, also, we have to take note that the smaller the solubility, or rather the smaller the KSP, the KSP value, the less soluble. The less soluble the compound is. So um, ionic compounds that have got KSP values that are around that are around or about um, ten to the minus thirty, ten to the minus fifty, these are very very low solubility. very low solubility. So these are very low solubility. So the solubility of a substance, solubility of a compound,
or substance can be expressed in two ways. A, we can do that using the molar solubility. And this is the number of moles. Number of moles of a substance of a solute in one liter of a saturated solution. And this is measured in moles per liter, which is also equal to moles liter to the minus one. The second way we can express solubility instead of the molar solubility is just look at solubility and this solubility is the number of grams number of grams of solute in one liter of a saturated solution. And this is um, got units of grams per liter or grams liter minus. Now, if you have to calculate the molar solubility, What do you do? It's very easy. So you have um, about three steps to, um, to follow. So the first one is to write um, the balanced equilibrium reaction equation. Number two, construct an ICE table. We've done this. And number three, we fill in and figure out what we're looking for. So those are the three steps. Let's have um, an example to show what we mean. So example number one, let's say the KSP for silver bromide. Which is AG BR is seven point seven times ten to the minus thirteen. The question is calculate calculate the molar solubility. So the solution is, first of all, we say write the balanced equation. We have silver bromide, which is a solid, and gives us 
silver ion aqueous plus the bromine ion so you write the the equilibrium the ICE table so you write the ICE table um, the solid does not change uh, in, 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 its, in its form because it's not included in the equilibrium expression. The initial concentration is 0, 0. The change is plus x, plus x. The equilibrium concentrations become x and x. So the KSP expression therefore is equal to the concentration of silver ions times the concentration of the bromide ions now we know that the concentration here is x times x which becomes x squared therefore uh, we can say 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 18 is equal to x squared. We can then raise the, the square root on both sides. Therefore, our x value becomes 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 7. And this is molar. So since we are looking for the molar solubility, we can say, therefore, the molar solubility of silver bromide is equal to 8.8 .8 times 10 to the power minus 18, that is molar. Um, if you like, you can say 8.8 .8 times 10 to the power minus 18 moles per liter. Okay. We can also calculate the solubility, which is part two. The solubility. The solubility is given in grams per liter. So what we are going to do is just to convert um, this value from moles per liter to grams per liter. So the, the link here is on the molecular mass of silver bromide. Uh, so we know that the molecular mass, you can calculate that if you, if you like, is 187.8. 8 grams per mole. So we just um, equate this one. So therefore, we're going to say solubility is equal to the concentration, which is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 13 moles per liter times the molar mass which is 187.8 grams per mole. Let me just write that properly. So grams per mole. Uh, you see here that um, the mole and the mole will cancel out. And then we're going to remain with uh, grams per liter. So if you simplify that, then the solubility becomes 1.7 uh, times 10 to the minus 4 grams per liter. So that is the solubility. Okay. We can look at another example. Uh, in this case,
we can say calculate the solubility of copper to hydroxide in grams per liter. Now, if we are given the KSP to be equal to 2.2 times 10 to the minus 20, how do we go about this question? How do we solve this question? So take note that in our first example, um, we were asked to calculate the uh, molar solubility having been given the the KSP value. So we're given the KSP value in this case. Now for this one, um, what we've been given um, again is the KSP value. We are asked to calculate the solubility. So the first thing that we have to uh, to be interested in is to know also the molecular mass. So the molecular mass for copper two hydroxide is ninety-seven point five seven, and this is grams per mole. So the solution, first of all, is to write the balanced equation uh, for the uh, KSP equilibrium. So copper two hydroxide is a solid will give us copper two ions in aqueous plus two hydroxyl ions in solution. So again, we write the ICE table. Um, so at initial, we'll have zero, zero. The change will be plus X and this side plus two X. At equilibrium, we'll have X and two X. So we can uh, therefore write the KSP expression. So and say KSP is equal to the concentration of uh, copper, which is represented by X, times the concentration of uh, hydroxyl ions, which is uh, uh, represented by 2X. But remember that this will be raised to the power 2. Uh, so let me just write this uh, so that the next time I can skip it, you have an idea. So we have concentration of copper to ions times concentration of hydroxyl ions raised to the power two. So if we substitute this, we'll have x uh, times two x and squared. So that's where we are getting that from. Uh, and therefore, we are going to have 2x squared is 4x squared times x, that is 4x cubed. So our KSP value is equal to 4x cubed. So we can go ahead and substitute. So our KSP, we are saying is 4x cubed. Um, let's put in the values. So we have 2.2 .2 times 10 to the minus 20 is equal to 4x cubed. Uh, so we divide both sides by 4. Divide by 4 this side also. What we get um, is if you like, we'll have x is equal to the cube root of 2.2 .2 times 10 to the minus 20 divided by 4. So divided by 4, like that. So our value becomes 1.8 times 10 um, to the minus 7. And this becomes molar. So the molar solubility in this case uh, becomes 
times 10 to the minus 7 molar. Now, you, you take note from the uh, equation here that the value of x uh, is, uh, is equal to the concentration of copper. So therefore, if we have to calculate the solubility of copper to hydroxide in grams a liter, um, then we need to multiply with its uh, molar mass, which is that one there. So all we have to do is um, like what we did in the first question. So therefore, we can say the solubility of copper to hydroxide is equal to the concentration times that is molar. Let me write moles a liter times 97.57. That is grams per mole. So if we simplify that, it gives us 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 grams per liter. And it, that is our solubility for copper to hydroxide. Let's give another example. Example three. Let's say the cell the solubility of calcium sulfate the formula is that is found experimentally to be 0 0.67 grams per liter. Calculate the KSP value. That is for calcium sulfate. The molecular mass uh, for calcium sulfate is 136.5 uh, grams per mole. Now here take note that we have been given the solubility. So um, we are asked to calculate the KSP value. Okay. Now the KSP value is basically the molar solubility. Um, so if you like, you can write the reaction equation uh, for this. So we can say the solution, therefore, is first of all, um, you can write the reaction equation, or you can calculate the value uh, for the molar solubility. So the molar solubility in this case, let's start with the molar solubility. Uh, we calculate would be equal to the solubility which is in grams per liter times um, uh, 1 over the molecular mass which gives us 0 0.67 grams 0 0.67 grams So 0 0.6 grams oh, oh. So 0 0.6 grams 
of calcium sulfate per liter times uh, one more of calcium sulfate over 136.2 grams. Okay, so if um, you check, the gram and the gram will cancel out. Uh, simplify that. Uh, we are going to get um, a value of uh, X, which is the solubility, to be equal to 4.9 times 10 into the power minus 3. And then we have moles per liter. So this will be our, our molar solubility. Okay, now we can go ahead and write the, the equilibrium expression, the KSP, for this reaction. So we have uh, calcium sulfate uh, giving us calcium 2 plus ions aquas, that is, sorry, plus uh, the sulfate ion aquas to the 2 minus. So we write the ICE table. Uh, this side again, no change. So 0, 0, we have plus x and plus x. At equilibrium, we'll have xx. So our KSP value is actually equal to x squared. So we can push in the values now for the value of x. We know that the value of x is 4.9 times 10 to the minus 3. So we write that. So we have 4.9 times 10 to the minus 3. Um, raised to the power 2. And if you want to check for the units, also you can raise them to the power 2. So we have 2.4 times 10 to the minus 5 molar squared. So that is the value of the KSP. Uh, so finally, for the first segment of this uh, uh, video, we can look at how do you predict um, if a precipitation reaction is going to happen. So precipitation reactions. So it's very simple. What you do is you just calculate the reaction quotient which is Q. Uh, this is the same as uh, the reaction quotient that we calculated for the equilibrium constant. So Q also has um, the same form um, as KSP except that the concentrations are not at equilibrium. So mostly these are um, initial concentrations. So how do you use this um, to determine if a precipitation is going to happen? So if Q is less than or equal to KSP, then the interpretation is that no precipitate forms. No precipitate will form. And if Q is greater than KSP, then we are saying that uh, the precipitate or actually form or precipitate forms. Let's look at an example. Let's 
We are saying predict whether a precipitate of barium sulfate with a KSP value of 1.1 times 10 to the minus 10 will form when potassium sulfate is added to barium chloride. Given that, the concentration of barium is equal to 0 0.0 011 molar and the concentration of the sulfate ions is equal to 0 0.0058 molar. So here what we have is uh, two solutions that we want to mix. So what's the solution? What we have to understand is that the barium sulfate has got the sulfate radicals. The barium chloride has got the, uh, the barium ions. So to calculate or rather to predict uh, precipitation, we calculate Q. So Q is equal to the concentration of the barium ion times the concentration of the sulfate ions. So you just get 0 0.0011, multiply it by 0 0.0058, um, and our value is 6.4 times 10 to the minus 6. Now, obviously, this is the value of Q. It is far much greater than the KSP value of 1.1 uh, times 10 to the minus 10. So um, here we can say safely that um, the precipitate will form, or rather barium sulfate, which is the product is going to precipitate. So we can say barium sulfate uh, will precipitate or it will form a solid. Okay, so this is the end of the uh, first part of this um, uh, video. Um, I'll, I'll make another one uh, for the second part.